Okay, just a quick overview of the document. Um, this is the first page of the document. Um, what you notice is that um, there's going to be content given to you. Uh, the content is going to be given to the prison mathematics project and those participants uh, participating in that. So the mentors and the uh, participants of the prison mathematics project would have access to this document. So I realize that other people may want access to it, but this is really introduction to, um, you know, Webster Wells's advanced algebra class. All right. So I'm just going to, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, like rapidly scroll through a document, but I do want to point out <coughs> if you want to learn about this, you'd have to start at the beginning. All right. Even if you think you know this material, start at the beginning. So, for example, if you look at the sections, they talk about section one, which is materials for exercise one. That's how these things are structured. They're structured like one, two, three, and it goes up to. Let me just quickly scroll through that for you. I know that can be quite annoying to do that. It's really a, really a long document. Well, right now it stands at about 2,500 pages, but it's in draft mode. We're going to be adding more. To, I'm going to be adding more to it. And certainly, uh, you know, when I see an error, I'll correct it. If anyone's reading the document and points out an error, I'll correct it. Um, I certainly I'll expand work for students that need to see the work expand it. Yada, yada, yada. We're trying to make it a good document. No doubt about it. I mean, I mean, we, the people that read the document and me who's creating the document. Now, Wells's original textbook is around 500 pages long and his pages are small. It's a small book. So something's been added to it. A lot has been added to it. And something uh, I, I wanna, you know, it's not a complaint about the old books, but the old books really had very little work down. So I, I tend to expand upon the work. All right. But anyway, you also keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. This is just a table of content. All right. Table of content. What do you have up to 139 exercises? That doesn't sound too bad. I can get through 139 exercises. I'll be honest with you. The exercises towards the end get really tough. It's not the beginning part of the book. It's the toughness towards the end. All right. He goes towards things that in traditional algebra for a lot of students would be foreign to them. Even students that go to really good schools. It would be completely foreign to them, the topics that he's covering. Even in the beginning, if you start talking about symmetry and cyclosymmetry, you're going to be shocked that the um, algebra back in 1904, right, was a very difficult subject. And I think part of the reason for it, I think fewer students were taking algebra back in 1904. It was really a select group of students. This is my, you know, I, I don't know historically if it's true or not. But I think it's true. I think a select group of students were taking it and those students that proved to be good at it would be moving into those careers um, that depended on having good algebra skills, what we call STEM nowadays, you know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, all right? So, you know, nowadays we say, oh, everyone should learn algebra. So what happened to algebra, in my opinion, I've been teaching a long time, is it sort of gets, and I hate to use the word dumbed down because it sounds offensive, but it really has been simplified into a very simple course. Like if you look at a college algebra class now, and it really does, it almost reminds me of a middle school algebra class that some students would be seeing. I mean, that you know, you know, really simplistic problems, virtually no pattern recognition. I think the most advanced pattern recognition they do in, in, um, in the college level algebra is probably the difference in sum of perfect cubes. But here's, here's the problem though. Wells does a lot of patterns, right? Things that you would not even see as patterns in, in, in traditional algebra, but he goes through a lot of them, all right? A lot of patterns. I think it's important for those students thinking about mathematically a little more seriously to see what Wells is doing, not to memorize it, not to worship it, but to look at what he's doing. There's something about this document that he does including things that are no longer discussed, all right? However, I will say the major part of what he's talking about is certainly doable by most people that have a mathematical background, all right? It's doable. They may look at this and say, it looks so far to me, but it's doable. All right, so let me put, just talk about the document. And not that I'm, I'm gonna talk about any particular, you know, section in detail, but I, I can say, you know, if you, if you went to the document, you know, let's say you just want to go to exercises 121, you could click on this. That would bring you to page uh, 1,989. Let me click on it and I'm there. 
magic, all right? Not really. Here's the deal. Every single section is going to look like this. What does it look like? There's a little note in the beginning talking about you need to read this, all right? Now, I say you need to read. I got to be honest with you. A lot of students don't read. They just want to get busy with the problems. That's not bad. Get busy with the problems. So there's content. That's on page 1990. There's examples on page 1996. That means the content, you know, looking at 90 to 96. Let's go, we'll look at it. And then there's exercises. So this video series, what I'm gonna do is concentrate on just the examples, all right? You're expected to read the document. Maybe if you need help, watch me do the examples. But here's the deal. I think after you read the content, do the examples, or watch me do the examples, you should be ready to do the exercises. Let me just quickly scroll through this. Here's the contents. And again, you know, and I, I say the contents, I, I'm, I'm referring to Webster Wells's textbook. His textbook is Advanced Course in Algebra. It's actually a course in algebra. It's a good course. And you know, this is a chapter, what is the chapter? 10, 20, 30, 37, chapter 37 of this thing. But chapter 37 has an exercise in it, which is you know, exercise 121. That's why I call it the 121st section. All right. Now, if you look at this thing, you'd be expected to read through this, make sense out of it. All right. They talk about, you know, fractional roots. You know, nowadays we don't use the word fractional roots. We say rational roots, complex roots. Yeah, we talk about complex roots. That's a, that's a demand of algebra. All right. So you'd read through that kind of hard sometimes. He talks about the transformation of equations. We talk, nowadays we say, we don't say really transformation so much, we say translation. Really what are we basically doing is moving things around. But for a lot of students, moving things around, what we teach us is just for moving things around. Wells has a motive for moving things around. There's a motive behind it. It's not just so we can move things around, it has a use to it. And he goes through that use. I'm not saying directly here, but at some point, you start to see use to what he's talking about, that there's use to it. And that's what I want to get across to you. That is a big, long document. And to get to 121, you'd have to go through the prior sections to get there. But anyway, I, let me explain it. what I did here. I, I actually took Webster Wells' text and I retyped it, all 500 pages of it. And certainly back then they typeset, I guess they were, it must've been very difficult to typeset mathematics back then. Uh, books were probably a little bit easier. They had movable type, but but doing uh, math must have been very difficult. But I, I, I typeset it and I did change some of the words, by the way, not a lot of the words. I try to keep the original flavor of the document, but maybe I changed a little bit of the typesetting. The reason being is that, you know, I try to clarify some of the things he was doing in the typesetting. Some of the typesetting is rather hard to read in Wells's because it just, you know, the book is old and it's just hard to look at. All right. But anyway, I, I did retype it. And I think I did a pretty good job of retyping it, retypesetting it. It's in typeset and LaTeX. But anyway, it's the contents of section 121. Now, the videos that follow will be me doing, you know, extra, uh, examples uh, one, examples two, so forth and so on. Um, oh, synthetic division, that's certainly taught nowadays. I'm not a big fan of it, but it's taught. All right. And, and certainly the notation that Wells uses in his text is a little bit different than the one I put down. But the bottom line, you can look at it. You know, you can look at it. It might be familiar to you if you've got synthetic division. If it's not familiar, you may want to learn how to do it. Or you should say, I, I like long division. Why would I do synthetic division? Whatever works for you. The goal here is to realize that there's a lot of material in this text. All right. Oh, this nice little quote. Most of my sections, I should say most, all my sections have quotes in it. This is from Matisse, work cures everything. I will say this though, work that you sort of have some engagement with is a good cure, right? Engagement with your work. All right. Now, if you're working at a job, you're not engaged with, you hate it. It's not a cure. It's a curse. All right. But anyway, what I do when we get to the examples is I sometimes give a summary in a modern tone, all right? Not in the tone that he talked about. He's very technical. He is very precise. He is very pedantic. I give him more of a, a, an approach that maybe your algebra teacher would have given you when you took algebra. Possibly they talk through it, yada, yada, yada. Possibly they explain it to you and they try to get you to think about it, but you should start thinking about this. But like vertical shifts, horizontal shifts, yada, yada, yada. 
also reflections in both the X and the Y axis, yada, yada, yada. Again, I have to say in modern day algebra, at least the way the schools I'm teaching at, basically it just, it's just to do things. They rarely get to use things. They just get to do things. Wells's attempt is to teach things that will eventually be used to do things. Now you may not know why you're doing those things or why you're using those things, but the goal here was for Wells was to proceed forward for students wishing to enter into a STEM related career. And that's the goal of this course over here to move students into a STEM related career. Like after you finish algebra, traditionally you would go to trigonometry. After you finish trigonometry, traditionally you'd go through calculus, All right? Now in some schools, calculus might be three semesters long In other schools it might be four semesters long, that depends. But calculus, pretty much standardized now. If you look at most calculus textbooks, they're pretty much covering the same stuff. Our goal is to get you there. Now, after calculus, what are you gonna do? The goal might be differential equations, linear algebra. Then there might be more advanced things like advanced algebra, complex analysis, real analysis, yada, yada, yada. It just doesn't end. It really doesn't end, all right? But I, when I say it doesn't end, the foundation needs to be built and upon that foundation, what are you going to be doing? Building on it. And it has to be a very strong foundation because there's a lot of blocks that are going on top of that. But anyway, I do present additional material. Here's a good case of it. Um, it's not in the textbook. You'll, you'll, you'll know that by the sections as you start reading these things, what is and what is not. And then, of course, you know, I go through examples. And the examples I want to point out are right here. What do I do? I basically take verbatim what he's asking. I may change the words a little bit and the typesetting certainly has been changed. I try to make it more clear. This is done in LaTeX, by the way. And then I try to answer the question. And in the blue area is what I would consider to be my work. Now, when I go to the whiteboard though, and I will do that, you'll see me talking through the work. Some students need me to talk through the work. I'll talk through the work. If you don't need that and the blue area is enough for you, that's great. But here's the deal. What you need to do is you need to read the question you need to work the question on paper, and then you need to self-assess. What's the self-assessment part? Looking at the blue area, and also some images that I'm providing to you, all right? And I, you know, I go through a bunch of problems, and some of a lot of problems, but we are expected to go through that. And we're just giving an overview of one section. I just picked it sort of at random, and then eventually get the exercises. Fran Leibowitz, she's a famous New Yorker, and uh, she's kind of funny. I, I think she had a pro problem with algebra. And I really feel bad that when people have problem with algebra, they keep forcing it on them. You know, I, I, I always say that algebra is not the most important thing in the world. If someone has trouble with it, let it go, right? Don't torture them with it, all right? It's a torture form. If you're good at it though, it's not torture. It's something that you get engaged with. And that's the whole point of education, not as a torturing tool, but as a tool to proceed forward into an area that interests you, or at least provide you some interesting ideas, right? Will you use these ideas? No, but let me give you Fran Leibowitz's quote over here. It says, in real life, I assure you, there is no such thing as algebra. And to Fran Leibowitz, who hated algebra, that is so true. There's no algebra in her life. She, she went on to do something else. She's quite successful. She's got, you know, she, she, she built a good life. And you know what? She's successful. And that's what we're looking for, success. Algebra is not a part of it. It doesn't have to be a part of it. Don't believe algebra is a part of people's success. It's not. However, if you're moving into the STEM-related careers, algebra is a part of it. You've got to get good at algebra, all right? So what do you do? You start to reinforce what we teach here. What do we teach over here? Well, this is section 121. We went through some content. That's the Wells' content. We went through some examples. And then you do your exercises, again, through self-assessment. So there's questions in the blue area, there's answers. And this can be the structure of all the sections that we give you. There will also be images. And I try to keep things very organized for you. For example, question number one, they do say there's an image 263 on page 2005. You can certainly scroll there. But remember, if something's in red, you can click there and go right there to that image. Whoops, sorry about that. Right there, image 263. All right, you can do that. The images are being provided. I'm not saying you're at that stage yet. What stage should you be at now? You should be looking forward to looking at section one, being able to do the examples from section one, being able to do the exercises. Once that done, section two, 
so forth and so on. The guarantee is this, if you can follow step by step by step, you will get to section 139. There are a few exceptions though. There are some sections of the text, right? That are incredibly difficult to get through, incredibly difficult. You're gonna find it a struggle. Meet the struggle though, do your best. Thank you for paying attention.